Sir, of course, we know from Islamic history, Brother Robert, that uh, Muhammad gained his strength by the razias, the raids on the Quraysh tribes, uh, stealing, looting, raiding, pillaging. Uh, certainly, we, uh, my history hasn't informed me of, of a similar way of, of George Washington calling up the Continental Army, uh, but we find that uh, Muhammad, of course, how in fact did he gain power? Was it uh, through a declaration of independence from the Quraysh? Was it through legislative <laughs> action, perhaps? <laughs> you know, was it through uh, many entreaties uh, to the Quraysh tribal leaders? Certainly not. Oh, this, of course, is analogous to what George Washington and, and uh, the American revolutionaries did, but it's, it's a completely different, diametrically opposed way of gaining power. Yes. Uh, obviously, they both did fight wars. Obviously, they both uh, gained political power as a result of those wars, although Washington was an elected official mm -hmm. and Muhammad was a warlord mm -hmm. uh, who uh, gained power solely by force of might. At the same time, however, the spirit of the way in which they fought was so different. And George Washington fought at a time before the Geneva Convention, but he still fought uh, according to the rules of warfare that were generally recognized by civilized nations at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, take, for example, this from the life of Muhammad. Uh, some people from the Uraina tribe came to Medina, and its climate did not suit them. So Allah's apostle, that is Muhammad, of course, allowed them to go to the herd of camels given as zakat. And they drank their milk and urine as medicine. Mm. But they killed the shepherd and drove away all the camels. So what would George Washington have done? Ask yourself if you think George Washington would have reacted in this way. Allah's apostle sent men in their pursuit to catch them, and they were brought, and he had their hands and feet cut, and their eyes branded with heated pieces of iron. And they were left in the Hara, a stony place at Medina, biting the stones. Another hadith has it that Muhammad denied them food and water despite their begging for water in the desert where they were unable to move, of course, because their hands and feet had been cut off. And so imagine, uh, Mr. President, did you ever behave this way toward the British during the American Revolution? Uh, no, I didn't, but I, I actually caught two issues in there. One, <laughs> hey, oh, burn, you, you could burn people's eyes out with hot nails and stuff, leave them out in the sun. You could do all sorts of horrible, violent things. And, and of course, there are far more stories than this in the Muslim sources. Uh, uh, torturing Kanena for, for money. He knew where some money was in. We're going to hold him down. We're going to light a fire on his chest until he tells us all kinds of that. But the drinking of camel urine. That's medicine. I, I, I can't get, I can't, I can't, I, I just can't get past Mr. that President, because did you drink camel urine as medicine? in this article, in this article, we, I was compared to Muhammad on the issue of personal hygiene. Right? That's right. That's right. On personal yes. hygiene. You're comparing me on the issue of personal hygiene to a guy who's going around passing out camel urine <laughs> as a drink. Right? Oh. And and th this this is this 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 is sort of the capstone because when you read the Muslim sources, you you realize how disturbing this is. First of all. Muslims are allowed to have up to four wives, unless you're Muhammad, and then you get, and then you get nine or 11 or however many you want. But Muslims are also allowed to rape their female captives yeah. when they attack some other place. Now think about this. You're marching in a town. Oh, she's hot. Let me have sex with her. You don't know what diseases she has. We're talking about personal hygiene, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know what kind of disease that woman has. And then you go back to your four wives, and guess what? Now they all have the disease. Now all the kids you produce have the disease. Lots of disease spread around. Is this good for personal hygiene? I say no. We read in the Muslim sources that Muslims went to Muhammad and they said, Muhammad, we need to do our washings. Right. We need to do our ceremonial washings. Mm -hmm. And we have over here the well of Buddha. It's filled with human waste. People put their urine, their feces. Women put their used menstrual cloths in there. They throw dead animals in there. And they say to Muhammad, should we use this water? And he says, yes, water is not made impure by anything. Mm -hmm. So they're rubbing this all over their face. Is that, is that, is that the sort of hygiene that I would practice? So suppose Suppose you sit there, you rub this all over your body. You're not feeling good. You rub it all over your body, clean yourself up for dinner, let's say. Then a fly falls into your meal. What are you going to do? According to Muhammad, you have to dunk the fly in there because even though one of, its, one of its wings may have a disease like typhoid or something, the other wing has the cure for the disease. So a fly's over there crawling around on, some, uh, on a pile of dog dew and then lands in your food and you're sitting there following Muhammad's advice, dunking it in your food. Well, then you get a stomach ache. You want to drink of water. Muslims one day found a dead animal floating in water. They said, Muhammad, should we drink this? They said, yeah, water's not made impure by anything. Again, so now they're drinking this water. Muhammad, we know, according to Musnad, Musnad Ahmad, 
used to suck on the tongues of other men. It used to suck on their tongues and their lips. Now think about this. You wash up with human feces and urine, right? Then you eat your meal. You're dipping the fly in there with typhoid on it, right? <laughs> then you're not feeling good. You get a stomach ache. Let me drink some water. Now yeah. you drink some water with a dead animal floating yeah. in it. Then you're sucking on the tongue of your buddy here. You're both <laughs> sick now. And what's the cure when you feel really, really bad? Camel urine. <laughs> Camel urine, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is the guy that the Huffington Post compares me to. Mr. President, <laughs> with all due respect, I must say I've enjoyed the, the last few minutes of that explanation. But, but, you know, once again, trying to be fair, aren't these really peripheral uh, issues? I mean, after all... Peripheral? <laughs> They're comparing me to Muhammad on hygiene, saying you should... And then the article concludes by saying you should follow these practices. You should follow the example set by Muhammad. If you follow the example of Muhammad, you will die. You will die. You will literally get sick and die. The and only reason hell. Muslims are still with us is that they were smart enough not to keep washing themselves up with feces, not to keep drinking water from a, from a pool with an, a dead animal floating in it. They were smarter than their prophet was, and that's why they're alive. So don't, don't say I'm exaggerating. Here.